There you go. Question is just, you know, how did tennis first enter your life? Uh, tennis uh, got into my life when I was uh, very young, uh, probably around five years old. So I grew up in, a, I would say, a sports family, but uh, my mom was a teacher, so studying was very important for her. But the rest of the family, my, uh, my father and my two older brothers, um, were crazy into sport, in, uh, in football, in soccer, and in tennis. So uh, it started with. Uh, with a tennis table because we had a table at home and uh, I was four years old and I, was, uh, I wasn't as tall as the table and I started to hit and I, I didn't miss uh, a single ball and uh, I was playing a lot with my brothers. They were playing tennis tournaments and I was uh, following them yeah, everywhere. Uh, I always say today that probably my biggest chance uh, was to, uh, to have all the brothers. They were um, uh, seven and nine when I was born and pff, they had a lot of patience with me. So they brought me to sports pretty naturally and uh, growing up with, uh, with two older brothers really gave me the, the character and uh, the passion of the sports. And uh, I was playing football and I was playing tennis with them. It was a big part of our, of our of our life, so it's really how how it started. Uh, after the matches, they always took a few minutes or sometimes a few hours to hit with me, and uh, it's been amazing because I was uh, from the really the beginning. I was focused on the on the ball and on nothing else. So it was probably a way for me to uh, I don't know to stay concentrated or to to be involved in something. Uh, it's uh, it could be something else, but it's what I I chose. Yes. I always uh, loved tennis uh, from the yeah the first uh, balls I did hit and uh, until the end of my career. But it started uh, yeah really quickly. It's like uh, you fall in love with something and something that becomes a, a big passion that is your whole life. So uh, I don't think that you can uh, run such a tennis career if you don't have the passion. Some of uh, big legends say that they didn't really love tennis at the first point, but uh, for my case, it was something very clear. Uh, when I was uh, six years old, I was uh, watching uh, Roland Garros on TV, and then I was going into my bedroom, and uh, I was pretending I was playing the final, uh, um, yeah, on that center court, and uh, and I was winning, and I was holding a trophy, and uh, I was answering the, the journalist at the end of the match. I was really into it. Into it, I was. Uh, um, I could visualize everything I wanted to achieve in tennis. It's. Uh, pretty yeah, uh, strange to, to talk about it this way, but it's really how it happened. It was clear for me I wanted to become a, a champion, the number one player in the world. I was watching Steffi Graf on TV. She was my, uh, my biggest idol. And uh, I don't know the way she, the, the, the attitude she got on the court and the focus. Uh, I always had the feeling I, I had a little bit of the same character. And uh, yeah, I don't know, because I was, uh, happy kid at home, but a little bit in my bubble uh, already. I needed something really to, uh, not to control me, but uh, yeah, I, I had maybe to find something exceptional. Um, I don't know, to find my place in, in my family, but uh, sport, yeah, was everything in my life at the time. I loved school. I was uh, working pretty good at school, but uh, as far as I could be on the tennis court uh, after, after school, uh, I was the happiest girl in the world. Um, you know, tennis is an individual sport. You know, it's you by yourself. 
other sports you have teammates you can depend on and look to. Did you like the idea of tennis being an individual sport or was it just you? Well, being in an in individual sport has been um, not really a choice at the beginning because I was playing a lot of, uh, of soccer also. And so I was in a team of boys because there weren't any girls' uh, teams at that, uh, at that time. It's uh, 30 years ago, so things have changed a lot. Um, so I loved that idea to be part of, of the team. And even when I was playing uh, soccer, uh, I wanted just to, to put a lot of goals. <laughs> I want to be in attack and I wanted to, to make the difference. So I wanted to be in control and that's probably uh, part of what I loved in, in, in the, the choice I made playing a yeah, tennis player at the, the highest level uh, because I love that situation that uh, you are responsible for yourself and it has to come, you have a team and you have people around you. But when you're on the court and you need to make the decisions, you do it alone, and it's not you don't have uh, 10 seconds to react and to decide. Uh, the instinct is a big part of it, and uh, I like to feel things, and I think that's part of what I uh, what I really felt in love with in in, in the tennis. Uh, even now, after my tennis career, I realized that uh, being part of the team running a little company and everything is probably the hardest for me because I like to be in control. So uh, part of the reason maybe why I choose uh, tennis. In your career, you're known for having this beautiful one-handed backhand. How did that start? Did you always have a one-handed backhand? Did you switch at a certain age? How did that happen? I always uh, have been playing with a one-handed backhand um, from my first age, so since I'm five. Um, I took my little uh, racket. It was a, a gray one. I, I will never forget that. And uh, no, I, I don't know why. Probably because of Steffi and also Stefan Edberg was my second idol. So uh, I was attracted by the, the slice and the possibility to do different things with, with the hand. Um, for many years, I always thought that uh, I couldn't explain really uh, why I had that backhand. But then I started to, to think, and then I realized that when I was nine years old, I had, um, I had a coach at the time that uh, really put me in so many repetitions. And we, we all know that repetition is the key to uh, get into a process and to fix things. And, um, I remember that guy, uh, Luc, he was throwing me uh, hundreds of balls and I, uh, I had a technical issue at that time and I couldn't make it. And every time I was hitting the ball and he was just doing this with, with his head. So I, I j he wasn't saying anything. I knew what I had to do. And then after, I don't know, weeks, months and thousands of balls, finally I got uh, the right uh, movement. So I think that, uh, yeah, the rhythm, the timing, um, I could make a big difference with, uh, with the shot, but uh, the key has been the, the repetitions and just to feel the movement. Uh, I'm, I'm a player who worked a lot uh, uh, in the past and because I, I knew that physically I wasn't uh, as tall or as strong as other players, so I had to really work technically on different uh, elements to make sure that I was hitting the ball at the right time, at the right place and that I could find a certain power with the right movement. So that's a, a workout that I started uh, pretty young. And I always felt uh, it was part of my, of my history. Everyone is talking to me about, about my backhand. And uh, I had to be careful because sometimes I was, I was getting lazy on that shot later in my career. And Carlos, my coach, was always coming back on this and hitting a lot of balls and trying to find something more so I could be uh, more efficient, uh, even more efficient. So it's always a process that you have to start again. Uh, nothing comes like this, only with the talent. So I got the talent, that's for sure. But you need to make sure all the time that you, you try to develop something more because that's what the, the other players do. Growing up as a kid, was Roland Garros always the number one tournament for you? Tell me about that. Yeah, growing up, uh, I grew up with Juan Garros. It's been part of my, um, it's almost my second house. Uh, as, I, as I told you, I, uh, I was watching on TV. Uh, as Belgian, uh, we are close to Paris, and uh, it was the Grand Slam that we could uh, watch easily on TV. 
And uh, yeah, that, that's really how it started. Uh, here in Belgium, when it's Roland Garros on TV, uh, it's uh, during the, the, the exams of the students, but they always say, ah, when we want to take a pause, we, we watch Roland Garros. It's part of our, of our life, even if we don't like tennis. So, uh, of course, I was watching, like uh, many people, and, uh, and I always la loved, I don't know, the, the, the noise of the, of the clay and uh, the atmosphere and uh, even on TV. And then I got the chance when I was 10, uh, I won a, a national tournament in Belgium and the, the, spon the main sponsor of the tournament was uh, giving two, two seats in, in a sponsor box, uh, yeah, five meters from the court. Uh, for the final, it was a uh, uh, long time ago, I don't remember the year, but I was in 1992 and it was Celeste against Graf and I had the chance to go and, and see my idol. I was five meters from her and I was there with my mom and, um, and Steffi lost, uh, I think, eight, six in, in third. And so I was so disappointed, but at the same time, I, I gr yeah, grabbed my mom and I said to her, one day I'll be on that court and I will win. And um, she looked at me and saying, and I think she said, yeah, yes, my dear, of course, you can dream about it, but uh, I'm not sure it's gonna happen. And, and I, was, I was convinced that uh, that was what I wanted to do. It's very hard to explain why, but uh, when I was into the center court, I really felt, okay, that's my, my destiny. And uh, yeah, and um, 10, 10 years or 11 years uh, later, I was, uh, I was on, the, on that court and I was winning the French Open. So. Yeah, it's my second uh, home. Uh, when I go there, I love Paris. And uh, when I'm in Roland Garros, I feel that there is something special for me. And uh, I won Roland Garros Juniors also in 1997. And that's where you, you really live your first big emotions in Grand Slam. And uh, I grew up with that. And even now, when I go back, I still get almost the same feeling uh, when I was a little girl. And it's something kind of magical that is very hard to, to describe. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm tired, I've told yeah. you. So. <laughs> how, how important was your mom's role in your success in tennis as a kid and everything? How important was her being around and her support? Oh, the, the, ro the role of my mom has been, uh, of course, very important uh, because she died when I was very young, but also be because of everything she, she teach me. And uh, I, I learned uh, something big from her is uh, the commitment. So uh, when you go into something, you, you do it 200%. So she never pushed me to tennis, as I, as I said many times. She was a teacher. She was reading a lot of books. She wanted... Uh, we were four at home and she wanted us to be good at school and uh, yeah, sports, it was okay for her, but uh, it was, yeah, not something that important. When she was seeing that uh, my brothers and I, we were really into it, she was always uh, asking us, she, she, she drove us many times for our practice, for our competitions, but she wanted us to give our best and that's really what I... Uh, what I learned uh, from her is the, the passion, the commitment, the fact that we go to, to the end of the, of the process. And uh, so, yeah, she was uh, supporting me a lot. She wasn't pushing, but she was supporting me. And, uh, um, and then when, when she passed away, of course, uh, it's been, I, uh, I explained what happened at Roland Garros. And uh, so when she passed away, it become, became my mission to, uh, to achieve that. Uh, I also promised her that I would finish my um, my uh, my high school, and then I, I finally decided to do something else uh, and to be really involved in tennis. And I stopped school when I was 16. But for me, it wasn't really a risk because I was good at school and I knew that I would be a professional tennis player one day. So I decided to live my own life, even if it was hard for me. Uh, that I promised her to finish and finally I made another decision but it was probably the day also that I said okay I'm, I'm not a kid anymore and uh, I become an adult and I know what I want to do and I want where I want to go and uh, sometimes it's a bit tough because uh, family was important for me but my tennis career was even more important at that time that I wanted to reach my, uh, my dream and uh, 
the fact that she wasn't there anymore probably um, gave me the character also. Um, I'm not sure of that because when I was very a very young kid, I knew already what I wanted to do, but probably the fact that she wasn't there anymore gave me another energy to say, okay, I have, now I have to achieve that. Maybe I, I could do that even with her, but uh, yeah, I will never get that, that answer. But I, I'm the kind of person who always try to take um, something positive, even from the hardest moments. And it was the hardest moment of my life uh, because I had to build myself, uh, not alone, but yeah, by myself a lot. And uh, maybe today was my biggest gift that I had to take my life uh, by myself and that I had to take my responsibilities. And uh, when you have to do that off the court, probably it helps also uh, on the court to take the right decisions at, uh, at the good timing. Um, you were, I believe you were 15 when you found out that your, your mother had cancer. Um, how did you find out and what did you feel inside? Oh, so when I uh, heard that my that my mom was sick, I was I was 12, and uh, she was um, she was sick from cancer, and it uh, it lasted for only one year, so it it, it was pretty fast. And uh, my parents never really told me what was happening, and uh, they didn't want to put words on that. It's something that I uh, not have regrets today because I understand them perfectly. But uh, I think that kids feel a lot of things and understand a lot of things. And, uh, and today it's another, I mean, we are 25 years later and now we speak probably more easily about these things, but at that time cancer was still a word that was, uh, that was tough to hear, especially for, for kids of a certain age. But, uh, so I was at the tough age, 12 for a young girl is not an easy time. Uh, so yeah, my parents told us that uh, she was sick and that she, she needed surgery and that she would stop working as a teacher. And uh, my sister was eight, so it was even harder for her. She didn't really understand and I, was, I understood that something was really wrong. And um, it's been a year that's been very tough because I was keeping traveling for, for my tennis because it was still my dream and I wanted to follow that. But, uh, yeah, I, I, uh, I could feel that uh, things were pretty wrong at, at home. And uh, so it, it's been, yeah, of course, tough year. And then I realized very, year that, very late that she would pass away. Only the day before she passed away, my dad uh, said to us that uh, she wouldn't make it. So uh, it's been quite tough. We had time to prepare to this, but at the end, as nothing really has been said clearly, I always had the feeling that I wasn't ready to, to say goodbye. So it's uh, something that I had to, to think of, to discuss also with, uh, with my family uh, years later. And uh, of course, I don't um, have any anger on my parents on that because they wanted to protect us so much. And, but now in my life, it's something that really I keep with me, even with my kids. And I know that sometimes things are, are tough to say. But I think it's better to put words on things because we can we can do something of that. Uh, yeah, it hasn't been the the nicest moment of my. Yeah. Yeah, we'll just pick it from there. Um, is that door shut or no? Uh, actually, it's door is closed. Okay. I think it's better to close because yeah yeah, yeah. 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 we're gonna have pl now plenty of people of uh, coming into okay, the club yeah. for the lessons yeah. so. Do you remember where you were finishing? Yeah, 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 I'm good. Yeah. It's good, yeah. We're still on there, right? Yeah. Oh, that's just what you're burning. Yeah, it's right there. I just moved it. Okay, yeah. We can... Let's get the motor set. And get going. And Charlie, let's tilt down. So we'll jump ahead to 2003 Roland Garros, make the final, but throughout the tournament as you get closer to the final, how much do you think about your mother and you know this whole story of Roland Garros, <laughs> this being the tournament, how much is that with you, these thoughts as you're playing the matches? Oh, in 2003 when I got the opportunity to win finally that first Roland Garros, uh, we can remember that two years earlier I was in, in good position in the semi-final. I was uh, 
a six, one and four to up against Kim Clasters in the semis and I couldn't make it. So it was a first opportunity that I'd lost and then two years later I'm in another um, amazing position. And I n really didn't think about that until I, I beat Serena in the, in the semis and, uh, and I qualified for the final against Kim. And um, I always remember when I, uh, when I woke up uh, the day of the final, I, uh, I said to, to my ex-husband that was with me at that time, uh, I, I will win that final. And I was sure of it. It was something that I couldn't miss. It was, yeah, um, it was something that was clear for me. You never know what can happen, but that day I knew that uh, I wouldn't miss that opportunity. So I was really really connected to, uh, to her, to the fact that I promised, and I knew, I knew it was my day. And when, when we finished the match and um, we had a little word uh, between Kim and, and me, and, and she said, I, I, I know how much uh, it is important for you. And uh, yeah, it's a moment that you, you I connected to something that is yeah, much bigger than you. And uh, I don't know, it's very hard even to, to speak about that today because it's, uh, it's a moment that lasts for um, just a second, but then you realize I, that's my dream of a little girl that comes true. And it's also something that I promised to my mom and if she was here, uh, it would be just uh, fantastic. But um, as I told you, I always try to uh, take the positive things from what's the hardest. Was a, yeah, I would have been able to, to win Roland Garros if my mom was still there. I have no answer about that. And you have to continue to build yourself and to follow your dreams. And that's what I wanted to, to do. When my mom passed away for two years, I didn't know if I wanted to play tennis anymore. And then I took my time and I came back into it. And then I met my coach, Carlos. And then from there, we built really the, the goals and the goal was to win the French Open and to become number one. And uh, when, when it happened that day, yeah, you have the feeling that uh, you worked so hard for this and um, it's even hard to, to describe or to uh, what are the feelings that day. I won other Grand Slams after and it's easier to speak about that, but that first one, you just think of the little girl that you were. And also what is amazing is that not a lot of people believe that I could make it. That's what I like also in life is that I like to, to prove that what seems uh, impossible at the end, if you put everything that you have uh, in you, can become possible. And um, that's what I proved because they all thought that I wasn't strong enough, I wasn't tall enough, and uh, the level of the game also at that time was pretty, pretty high. And um, I remember when I was meeting people and I was saying to them clearly that I wanted to become number one, they were laughing and, uh, and I loved that, actually. <laughs> I loved that idea that I could prove to them one day that um, I could do it differently. And uh, it was uh, something that gave me a lot of energy. Um, 2004, you, you suffered an illness. Mm -hmm. um, what was the illness and how did it affect you? In 2004, I got uh, into probably one of the hardest moments of my, of my career because I got um, a CMV, which is a virus uh, close to mononucleosis. And uh, we didn't really put um, a name on it and only after a few weeks of exams and uh, because I was just tired a little bit at the beginning and then we realized I had that virus. And uh, yeah, for a couple of months, uh, I wasn't feeling myself uh, anymore. It was pretty hard and frustrating because I'm not the kind of person who accepts uh, easily that physically I'm feeling down a little bit and, and also because my energy level, uh, I mean for everyone, but for me, especially because um, I had to work so hard to compensate the fact that I'm not uh, yeah, like other players with the same power. It means that I had to be consistent in the, in the workout I was doing and at that time I I couldn't be myself anymore in the gym or on the court, and uh, and I felt really that something was wrong, and it lasts for um, seven to eight months, which was hard. I tried to play, but then I realized that uh, I, I couldn't make it, so I, I took the time, and then uh, yeah, we decided that I finally go and play the Olympic Games in in Athens, in Greece, and uh, but I had no expectations because I was coming back from that virus, but it was the first. Olympic Games I could play and I said let's go for the experience 
and the, 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 yeah, the atmosphere uh, gave me an energy that I couldn't expect for. So match after match, I started to feel also better and, uh, and the energy of the, of the Belgian delegation and uh, the energy of the crowd and of the people over there um, gave me the possibility to win match after match. And finally, I won the Olympic Games and it was really unexpected because I had a few months that uh, I wasn't even feeling 30% uh, of, my, of my capacities. And there, there was something magical that brought me a little bit in another dimension. And uh, yeah, it was something, um, really there was a surprise. In 2005, you make another Roland Garros final, you play against Mary Pierce. Um, after suffering through physical illness, did you, when you're back in the final, did you, were you almost, you know, thankful that you were given this opportunity again, that you actually made it back to the stage and where you wanted to be? Yeah, it was, uh it was uh, something very special because winning a first uh, Roland Garros yeah, was something amazing, but then come back in Paris and being in another opportunity to, uh, to make it after all the, the trouble I had, even if I, I played well at the Olympic Games and I could win, I had some difficulties uh, physically also with my hamstrings and everything. So yeah, it was a timing that uh, I played almost a perfect tournament and uh, I had some trouble. Uh, in the beginning of the tournament, and then since then I didn't lose uh, a set for a couple of years uh, in Paris. So it was the beginning of an, an amazing adventure. Um, it wasn't the best final I've played in Paris. It was pretty cold and uh, the match was pretty quick, but at the end it was a second French Open. And uh, yeah, for me it was, um, of course, something very special. Not Maybe not as much as the first one, but uh, it's always hard for a player to, to be away from the courts for many months. And, and you have all these questions, am I going to be able to do it again? It's because of your doubts that you find a way to do it again, because uh, it's part of the, of the process. Uh, when you want to, uh, to stay at the top for a long time, it means that you need to realize that everything can, can, yeah, um, can stop. Uh, you know, from a tournament to another because of an injury, because of losing the motivation, because of the, the concurrence, all the other young players that are coming on the tour and everything. And it is tough to stay at the top. So you start to, to dub uh, physically, especially me, because I was, uh, um, yeah, it w I got a lot of injuries. So I, all the time I was questioning myself, am I going to be able to do it again? And uh, we started to try to find the answers, to do the workout that would give me the possibility to live it again and again. And uh, that's what happened. But it's also what I, what I love in that kind of career is that you know that everything can stop from a moment, moment to another. And um, you need to, yeah, to, uh, to stay in alert a little bit all the time and to keep improving. And to be in doubt is something necessary to, to improve. 2006, 2007, you win Roland Garros again, back to back again. Don't lose uh, even a set in 2006, 2007. Um, looking back on that, you know, winning Roland Garros without losing a set, does that even surprise you? And, and what clicked for you at this time that you were, you know, playing so well there and everything is just <laughs> seems like it's coming together? Yeah, in 2006, 2007, um, I was a little bit. Uh, in, an, in, in a zone in, uh, in Roland Garros. Everything was, uh, was so good. I was playing good. Uh, I have to agree that most of the girls also probably are more used to play on hard court because most of the season is on hard. And uh, I really grew up on clay. And for me, it was natural to slide. It was uh, a surface that I had more time to organize my game. So, the, the, the surface was really good for my tennis. Huh? Even if physically it's a little bit harder because points can be longer and you need to develop a certain power. But I really needed more time to, uh, to really uh, use all my shots and that surface gave me the possibility to do that. So I have to say that I always had a lot of fun to play on clay uh, because I can use my drop shot, because I, I could use my slice, because I could slide, because I could use different uh, trajectories and uh, it was really the best surface for me and not for a lot of players. So I, uh, I also took advantage on, of that. And uh, 
sometimes I was really into a tennis that, uh, that was the best of my, uh, of my career, especially in, in 2007. I think it was the best Roland Garros I've played. The, the, the level was amazing and it was a special tournament because I had to play Serena. She was in my quarters and uh, it was always tough when you had Serena in, the, in, the, in the part of, your part of the draw. So I was a bit nervous about that. And then also, um, as I didn't see my family for many years and uh, my brothers and my sister, it was the first time they were coming to see me in the Grand Slam. So I wanted to do well, and I found uh, a special energy that year in 2007, and uh, I could play my, my best tennis on, uh, on clay. I was feeling that everything was, uh, was there for me to, to win another, another Roland Garros. I didn't know it was the last one. I got opportunities to, to come back later, uh, but I really, really enjoyed every, every second of it. You just said uh, you, you didn't see your family for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. Was there a reason for that at that time? Oh, you know, in, in every family, sometimes you have uh, ups and downs, and uh, I was really focused on, uh, of, on, on my career. It hasn't, uh, it's not a secret that my, my dad and I, we had some, uh, some problems for, for many years. It was tough to understand uh, each other, and um, yeah, my dad expected, uh, he wanted me to, to become a champion, but he was really nervous about that. Uh, it hasn't been easy. Uh, for him to uh, to raise the, f the four kids after my mom passed away and uh, yeah plenty of confusion uh, at the time and sometimes it happens in families and then yeah I decided to to go after my dream and um, to broke a little bit with my uh, with my family at the time but uh, then the time did the job and uh, we saw each other again and it gave us the possibility to share a lot of emotions um, when I was tennis player, but even more today, because uh, now I have my kids and I can understand that family is not always easy, and it's a lot of uh, a lot of work. And uh, and today uh, we have a very a very sol solid and new unit family, but uh, united family. But at that time, yeah, it was plenty of emotions uh, for me to play in front of them and to share uh, a lot of adrenaline, a lot of a lot of emotions. Because as as I said to you, even if we broke up a little bit for, for many years. Um, when I was a little girl, um, the support of my, of my two older brothers has been big. And uh, one day I think it's important, even if you, you had some problems, uh, not everything has been perfect, always to remind, okay, um, I did this, but I wasn't alone to do that. And they were my parents, they were my brothers, they were my coaches, they were my, all my support, my sponsors, all the, all the people I've met that made me a better player and a better person, and um, and of course my family was a, was a big part of it. You know, in tennis you're playing one-on-one -on -one matches. Everybody is looking for like a little edge, always, you know, mental, physical, whatever it may be. Um, did did being so competitive with everybody in the locker room? Did you did you almost feel isolated in tennis? Because tennis is like you don't want to become too friendly with everybody because you're you're playing against everybody. Did, mm -hmm. did you feel isolated in tennis? Oh, probably I was uh, I was different from uh, from some girls as uh, I was in as I said a lot of in my bubble I was I was there to do the job it's very hard to to explain why but I I never really played tennis to uh, to be on the circuit and to meet people and to have friends um, my goal was to to be there because I wanted to become yeah professional and I wanted to win. Uh, I always loved the competition from my first uh, age. I always tried to do it with uh, a lot of respect. Probably I did some mistakes sometimes, but uh, concurrence is, is tough and uh, you need to um, understand and to accept that and to push yourself to go to, uh, to another level. And it's a very competitive uh, sport. Tennis uh, is individual, as we said. And uh, it's not easy always to, um, yeah, to, to take the right decisions uh, at, at at, at the right time. And I, that's what I always loved in my sport, is how can I make the difference, even if I played bad during the whole match, how can I play good right now at the right moment? I think it's what makes the difference when, when you see um, Serena, for example, which is a little bit uh, mentally, I think, the, the, the toughest player I had to face. She, she can play sometimes far from her best level, but when she has to make the difference, she can make it. And I've always been very interested in that part. How can I accept that I'm not at my best, 
to that, and I'm probably far from that, but I can find the humility and the ego also at the same time to say, okay, now I'm gonna make the difference because I want to come back on the court tomorrow and be able to win another match. And um, so I always loved that part of the competition. Did I have a lot of friends? <laughs> Not really on the tour, but I, I never really missed that. I knew why I was there and my friends were away from tennis. Today I'm so happy to uh, meet some people from the past on the, on the tennis tour and we can remember now things without the pressure. Uh, and even if I didn't have really great friends on, in, on the tour, it's always a, a big pleasure to see uh, the former players that we can discuss together, see how life has been for all of us, how the kids grow up. Uh, so we share more about this. And, uh, but when you're into it, there is uh, a lot of pressure. That's for sure. And you don't choose this kind of life if, if you don't like a certain pressure, if, if you don't like a certain kind of concurrence. Uh, but yeah, really, what I loved into it was the time that you have to make a difference. Um, that point that you have to, to do the right thing was something that really pushed me a lot to, to get better. Do, do you feel like some of the media portrayed you differently than you really were as, as a person? And was that frustrating to you? No, I never thought that uh, media was showing me far away from who I was because um, I've always been um, honest in my way to, to be. And even if I, I, uh, I could um, seem a little bit distant and really into my bubble, okay, that, that was the way I, I was at the time. So I never, I always suffer a little bit from being criticized for reasons that you have the feeling it's not fair at the moment. Uh, but being under that pressure is something that uh, you need to accept. It's not a choice. When, you, when I got into tennis, I, I didn't think, oh, there's gonna be a lot of attention on me and I will have to deal with all these kind of things. Was it something that I, um, that I preferred, the relationship with the media? Of course not, but it was part of the, of the game. It's something that I, that I did accept. I tried to do it really the best I could. But now when people say to me, you look much nicer today than you were, and I say to them, yeah, you're right. <laughs> I'm nicer today than I was. But uh, I always, always, I think, thought that I had to protect myself uh, from all these attentions and from all the distractions. Uh, I chose to be there to play tennis and to win. And all, everything that was going around that wasn't really for me, it was no sense for me. I did it because it was part of it. But uh, I always thought that there were a lot of distractions and I wanted to stay away uh, from that. When we see today, there are a lot of distractions for the player when and just the smartphone and the, the, the social media and, and the press and the, the communication and the image. And, and we, have, we, we are part of it and we have to play that game also. But we have to make sure where, where we want to put the limits so you save your energy uh, for what, is, what gives sense to what you do. And for me, it was to be there, to win as many matches as possible and try to, to reach my dreams. Did I do it perfectly? Probably not, of course not but I have no regrets on, on anything. And uh, no, I have no frustration about the fact that people were thinking that I was really a distant uh, person, which I was at that time. 2003 to 2007, you have very successful years. Um, talk about after that, um, I believe your first retirement was around 2007? 2008. 2008. Yeah. You know, you have such a successful four years, I think it's four years in a row. Tell us what happens after and the decision to uh, retire. Ah, in 2007, I had the, um, the most beautiful uh, um, season in my career. I won the uh, French Open, I won um, the US Open that year, and, and then I won the Masters, and uh, I was number one at the end of the, of the year. And uh, I played my best tennis against uh, uh, Serena and Venus uh, at the US Open that year, and uh, I was really touching the best tennis of my career. Uh, but I've been through uh, personal issues that, that, was, that were pretty tough at the time. From, as I said to you, from my um, five years old, tennis became my whole life. And I did a lot of sacrifices to, uh, to reach my dreams and to live my dreams. And at the, at the end of the year 2007, my, my sister went through very difficult moments in her personal life. And uh, uh, we spoke about that and we, 
we said finally to each other that I would go to the to the championships in Madrid to play the championships as he, as she was living a really tough moment in, in Belgium and uh, and I went and I won and I came back and I started to realize that I had the feeling I was missing a lot of things in in my personal life and being away from my sister in the time that she needed probably me at home uh, has been something a little bit difficult for me and I started to to think that maybe it was time for me to uh, give more time to uh, my family, to my social life, to uh, just to take care of me personally. Because even if I have any regrets of everything I've done to reach my dreams, I started to feel that uh, there was another life and that I was really away, completely far away from that life. I was connected to my tennis life, but it was very hard for me to combine tennis life and private life and uh, at the time I really started to think maybe I want to go skiing, maybe I want to spend more time with my friends, maybe I want to uh, get closer to my family, maybe I want to have my own family. So it started to go into my head for a couple of months and uh, when I realized that my results weren't, weren't good anymore, I'm the kind of person who is doing everything 200%. So. Um, I couldn't be in that trouble of, I don't know if I want to be there again, and maybe I want to stop. When I, and then I stopped. And I, at that time, I didn't realize I was just doing a break because I tried to come back 18 months later. I came back 18 months later, but at that time for me, I've, I've been giving more than 20 years to tennis and it was time for me to relax and live a little bit without pressure and, and be closer to my family and to open maybe some um, some doors of the past that, were, that I had to do and about my mom and about a lot of things. So, yeah, it was early in my career, but um, also the way I lived my career was so intense that uh, it was almost normal I was going to, through that moment. You know, you've dealt with, um, in your tennis career, you've had a lot of triumph. Um, and in your personal life, you also had a lot of... Uh, Tough times. Mm -hmm. Thinking back today, which one has made you a stronger person today? Oh, I think that um, so many moments made me uh, a strong person. Um, life is not easy. Life is beautiful, and you you go through tough times. It's like almost a, a tennis career. You win, you lose. You work hard. You have joy. You make sacrifices. Uh, sometimes you have the feeling that. Uh, not everything is going well and then you have to start again and life is a little bit like that so i always been um, yeah very clear with that that i don't expect for everything to be perfect i deal with what what comes and i try to as i say to take something positive from all my experiences so um, yeah i lost my mom when i was young it has always always hasn't been easy with my family or with my dad uh, I got married when I was really, really young, and then I got divorced when I was really young. But in the end, it's a lot of all of this is a lot of passion. It's a lot of experience. You meet people um, that are gonna make you so happy. You make meet people that sometimes disappoint you. But it's it's uh, what life is. And um, as I as I said, I'm a very intense person, so I live my life. Uh, yeah, two hundred percent. And I'm someone who gives uh, everything. I'm very sensitive. Uh, I'm very honest. I know where I want to go, and I know what kind of relationship I want to have with uh, with people. And sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't work. And sometimes you have no choice. When when my mom got sick, okay, it was like that. If you live your whole life with uh, the fact how your life would be if she was here. It's, it's tough to move forward, and I, always, I miss her a lot. It's probably the, 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 the toughest experience of my life, that's for sure. My daughter one day said to me, but you were, she, my daughter is six, and she said to me, ah, oh, but uh, you were so young when your mom passed away, and it must have been so hard. And I said to her, of course it was hard, but you wouldn't be here today the way you are if she was here. And that's what life is, you, you move on, and I have no regrets about that. I had to build myself, I, that made me stronger. I had to take the decisions for myself. And at the end, you have no choice than to move forward. So I, I don't feel um, 
sad or mad on my, on my past because life brought me so many chances also to meet good people and to live wonderful experiences. And um, that's why I can look back today and say, I have the life I want to have. It's not the perfect life, but it's the life I want to have and it's, it's good enough for me. What, what's your relationship like with tennis today? And how is it different from when you were competing professionally? Uh, my relation uh, with tennis is uh, it's still very intense uh, as I have many projects uh, uh, very close to tennis um, because I have my, my academy and uh, because I'm still consistent for consultant for, for some players um, and because I want to give something back uh, to tennis and to, to life, to the life that I had and to the life that brought me so many things. So I want to share my experience uh, with kids or young players uh, or professional players also to share my experience, to share um, the beautiful way it has been and the fact that it's not coming like this in one day and uh, that sport can give you a lot of things, okay? You can learn a lot of things at school, of course, but sport is a great school of life also. So today I want to stay connected to this uh, because for me it's, it's very natural. Uh, I love to go on some tournaments, especially at Roland Garros, to, wo to work for TV and to stay connected in a certain way. On the other hand, I also want to, um, to open my mind to something different. And I always, I'm a very curious person and uh, I don't want to do only tennis today in my activities because uh, I want to learn other things because the world, when, I, when I stopped tennis, I, I thought that the tennis world was the world. <laughs> and then I realized that there were so many things to live, so many things to learn, so many people to, to meet. And um, it was tough for me at the beginning to open my mind because I, I wanted to be in something that I knew very well. Uh, and then, yeah, I started to believe that I had to uh, find a good balance between staying connected to my tennis life and to what I can give also um, to the kids and then be aware that there are plenty of other things to, uh, to learn. And that's what I, I love so much today is to be connected also to, to other things and to live a simple life. I think it's something very important for me today, just the simple moments, not something extraordinary as um, the second you win a Grand Slam, it's fantastic, but something more in balance. Uh, I love that today. You good? Yeah. Okay. Um, so you obviously returned to Roland Garros. Mm -hmm. You've been going to work in television. Um, even today or even when you go this year, when you return to Roland Garros, do you still, do the memories come into your, yeah? Um, so, you know, returning to Roland Garros, when you walk on the grounds, the center court, does, does the memories, do they just come back to you? How does that, how do you emotionally, how does that all work? Oh, yeah, when I, when I go back to Roland Garros, it's all the emotions uh, come back. Last year was uh, 15 years that uh, I won my first uh, Roland Garros, and I was there with my daughter. We took a picture on the center court, and uh, it's quite emotional to, uh, to look back and uh, Every, all the things that happened in 15 years and uh, where I am right now with my, with my family and, and go there and share this with, uh, with my husband and with my kids is something yeah, amazing. Uh, it's great also to go back to, to Paris uh, with not the same pressure, even if I, I work for TV uh, with a lot of professionalism, but it's not a kind of pressure that I had to uh, face when I was uh, a player. But what I like is to go and meet the people of the organization, it's to feel the atmosphere, it's to, it's just to be there and, and feel. There's something really that I love and uh, also to watch the matches with, uh, with more distance now, even if I, I keep, I stay connected to, do, uh, to the game and to, to the results and everything, but I don't have the same, of course, the same emotion and, uh, and the same passion. I still have passion, but it's very different. Uh, you, you, you look at that with a lot of dis emotional distance. And uh, 
yeah, I love I love that to try to analyze how the game is today and and to share that with all the people. And I love Paris, so that gives me also the opportunity to be in Paris for two weeks, which is a city that I that I really like and to visit also and to yeah find new places and uh, and meet my friends because I have a lot of friends over there. So it's a mix of a lot of. Uh, a lot of yeah, different feelings that uh, brings uh, that bring a lot of joy. <laughs> Great, we're almost near the end. Yeah, um, getting close. Um, so, when did you start the academy here, and what year did you start it? And just tell us, you know, how often you're here. It seems like you wear they say wear many hats. Yeah, you know, coaching, too many, business, too many. <laughs> so, how often? You know, when did you start? You know, the academy. How often are you here and, and just talk about how this is kind of consuming your life now? Yeah, I, I studied the Academy here in Belgium uh, 13 years ago, so it's a long time uh, already. I was still... Uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to have you do that again. Can we, instead of saying 13 years ago, can you say the year? So that would be what? 2006. Is it 13? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I, I studied the academy in the 2006, so I was still uh, professional at the time. I was still number one in the world uh, when I bought the club and I decided to, to do the academy. The first idea was that uh, Carlos, uh, my coach forever, and I, we could have an, uh, an activity together uh, when my career would stop and, and to share our passion, our experience with, uh, with the kids. So that's how it started. At the beginning, I wasn't uh, really involved into it. I was practicing in my academy, of course, and I was sharing um, yeah, some moments with, uh, with the kids. But it's really when I stopped my career that I, that I got more involved. And, uh, and today, I can say that I, um, yeah, I'm a big part of it. Is I, I spend uh, most of the time in my activities in here. Uh, so it's it's um, I'm here from the morning until the end of the day, almost every day of the week, uh, and I, of course, have different hats because I try to see it uh, globally with all the different activities that we have in in the club, but more directly on the on the sports part and in the tennis part, and try to share with the kids. Um, the experience of, of the way I had. So it's not the only way to do it, uh, but we try to speak on, on different aspects. Uh, I work with the coaches uh, a lot because I can teach them, but they can teach me a lot of things also. Um, being a professional tennis player at the highest level uh, doesn't give you naturally the, the opportunity to be a great coach, and I still have a lot of things also to learn from that. So it's, uh, it's a great experience because you start to look back and you and you realize, okay, we did it that way, but uh, for me it worked, and then for this kid it's gonna work another way. Even if I have some convictions uh, that we need some structure, that we need to, uh, to be clear when you have a, a young tennis player that, that says, okay, I want to be professional, or even I want to be number one in the world, I know that there are things that we can do, and I know that they have things that it's better not to do. And uh, so we try to, to share on that, and. Um, I always explain to kids that the most uh, important thing is to look back and have no regrets. So it means how I do the sacrifice, how I do the workout, um, how I deal with my personal life. And so it's, it's a lot of uh, sharing that uh, means a lot uh, to me because we don't speak only about forehands or backhands, uh, but more vision of a career. And uh, today, the, the, the young players, they, I mean, I think that most of them want everything comes so quickly. Okay, we're gonna do that and it's gonna work. Uh, maybe society is a little bit like that today and it changed a lot, but I really try to insist and to prove them that we need time to fix things, we need time to build. We, and also we have to accept that even when we build, we have no guarantee that the result is gonna be there. That's what's hard but beautiful in our lives. We invest a lot and we, we're not sure that it's gonna, that it's gonna work. And uh, I, I think it's fantastic because it's also like this in life. You give a lot of yourself and you have to move forward like that. So um, it's a lot of experience. Um, I try to give something to the kids, but it, they give me a lot also. And uh, I, it's not easy every day to run an academy, but I think it's, um, it's an opportunity to see things differently and also not to say, okay, tennis is from my past and now I want to do other things. Now I can keep um, the advantage of my tennis career and give them to, to the kids, so it's, uh, it's wonderful. Right. And then one of the 
uh, young girls that played your day on it. Yes. Um, obviously doing very well, 18 years old, already broken the top 40. Um, how long have you kind of worked with her and how much do you enjoy kind of using your past experiences and kind of being able to, you know, help someone else? So I, I worked with uh, Diana Yastremska for one year. Uh, now I st we started pretty pretty slowly. I tried to, she, she didn't really have a structure in the way she was seeing her career. The passion was there, um, a lot of support from the, from the parents, or some results already. But we tried to, I tried to develop with her a little bit more of a vision of a, of a career and it's something that takes time so it's been a wonderful uh, 12 months not everything has been easy because working with a with a young player means that it uh, needs time to put things in place so we started to build a staff uh, around her a physical coach a tennis coach from the academy now that is traveling all the time with her and um, when she comes back at the academy so we have time to work. It's always a moment that I love because uh, I'm on the court close to her, but I need to find a good distance because she has an, her coach now. And so we all, we work as a team. Uh, but what is fantastic is to uh, try to guide, but also um, be concerned of the personality and take care of the personality also. And, uh, and being able also to be honest all the time. It's something very important for me not to um, to be kind with the player, but not to protect the player all the time, because we need sometimes that we say something honest for you, and it's not always easy. I think it's also what part of being a good coach is being in the position that you're not gonna be afraid of losing your job. You know you can say what you have to say, and the relationship and the trust in the relationship will be strong enough that we can move forward together. And that's what we try to, uh, to build. And also, yeah, that idea that not everything can be done in, in one day, that you need time to build. We are further already than a year ago, and I hope that we're going to be much further in, in, in one year. And um, I have also to, yeah, take, um, take from my past, but also realize that Diana is not who I was on the court. We don't have the same personality. And this is something that I have to adjust to. And uh, as I said to you, I, um, I don't have a lot of experience in the coaching. And I learn a lot from the, from the other coaches. I'm still in contact with Carlos, uh, give me, giving me a lot of advices. Uh, but always with that, uh, the mentality that uh, the team we want to, to bring and to add something to what uh, Diana has today to become a better player one day. And uh, it's something fantastic because you build for the future. And uh, again, you don't know where you go, but you do it with uh, a lot of passion, with a lot of uh, love of the game. And um, yeah, that's a lot of uh, joy for, for the whole team of the Academy today. Um, how much are you enjoying motherhood? How much are you enjoying having kids? And <laughs> how much do you kind of think back to your mother? And maybe think, what would she do at this time? What would your mom's experience? Being uh, a mother is my, um, yeah, the most beautiful job in life and uh, it's my biggest passion today. It's the hardest one uh, so for the, all the parents. Uh, I, I, it hasn't been easy for me when, when I got my, my first child, uh, Lali, who is six today, because of my, of, of my personal uh, story with my mom and I was really scared uh, and anxious uh, mom when I, when I got her took a few weeks, a few months, really, to get used to my new role. And then um, everything went better. And then I got a second child, Victor, who is, uh, who is two years old now, is gonna turn two. And I love that we were four kids at home. And uh, now uh, that we have two kids and uh, the relationship they start to have. And uh, we work hard on that part because we have the feeling they, they can be if they want big support for, for each other. Education is the, the biggest part of our life. We can do something great from it, or we can um, make mistakes, and we make mistakes all the time. That's what I loved being a mother, as I've been number one in tennis, but as a mother, I'm just like anyone else. I do my best, I try my best, I do mistakes, I try to, to learn, and finally our kids teach us uh, a lot and uh, you can have all the convictions uh, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do that and finally at the end you just realize that you do the best you can so in my personality it was something hard to accept 
uh, that I was just doing my best and that I wasn't perfect, but then I realized very quickly it was impo impossible to be a perfect uh, parent. So no, that's the biggest role of my, of my life today. Uh, even if I'm very active in, in my projects, uh, I try to find that good uh, balance, but I'm not the mom who stays at home all the time and know the kids, they know that sometimes uh, I need to travel for, for my activities and I accepted it because, because I, I love that and um, I bring them with me and uh, uh, yeah, I'm very close of course as uh, a lot of mum too from them and uh, I try to, from my mother I don't know what I kept but um, yeah, I just try to guide them as also as I try to respect who they are with their personality and uh, it's not easy but it's uh, wonderful. So that's it for the questions. Now, before you get up, um, I was going to have you just say one line to camera. Like, yeah. uh, you know, they say, like, you know, I'll always have Paris, we'll always have Paris. Yeah. So I wonder if you could say it in French and then in English after. So okay. Maybe I'll always have Paris and then you say, I always. I will always have Paris. You can either say, I'll always have Paris or no matter what happens, I'll always have Paris. I don't know which one. I always love Paris. Have Paris. Have Paris. Because they can say, we'll always have Paris, right? Have Paris. I just want to kind of change it a little bit. J'ai pas compris en fait. I will always have Paris. En français, Paris fera toujours partie de moi. Ouais, ouais, ok. In French first. French and then right after say English. Okay. Paris fera toujours partie de moi. And in English, what do you say? I will always have will Paris. Always have Paris. Okay. And we'll, we'll do it again. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Paris fera toujours partie de moi. I will always have Paris. Okay. 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 Okay.